Once upon a time, there were two best friends. One of them had a computer, and the other one sucked. <laughs> Is that <laughs> what? I mean, I'm sure if you certainly tried, you could. I don't enjoy that he's just so headstrong forward all the time. Yeah. yeah like, I hate characters like that. Well, oh look, he came back for like a second. It, you're the ancient evil. You told me that you're about... Oh! So is this... It's him. He's not Demon King. Eating my soul and me dying, that was all a lie. Why would you say such a thing? Listen, Ephraim, I've always loved Fan fiction! What is happening right now? Demon King is not Demon King. Or is he? He... I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure, like... This is literally the Demon King just masquerading as, as Lion. That's what I thought. Like, he's using his actual memories and, like, feelings, but, like... Lion's like dead. Like I know whenever Lion talks to Erica when you go through like her path primarily, he's always like, Help me, help me, the demon king's taking control. Then against Ephraim it's just like, hey, 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 bitch. <laughs> hey, whoa, whoa, blocked. Wait, unblock me for a second, I gotta tell you something. What, bitch? <laughs> Well, this is just ongoing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will not be devoured, dude. No, but yeah, if it weren't for the fact that Ephraim had different character traits besides just being headstrong all the time, he would actually probably be my least favorite. Because when you have, so like, even with Ike, like, Ike was very hesitantly a leader. Yeah. And that made for great characterization. Because he was headstrong, but he wasn't, like... Uh, I don't think Ike was that interesting of a character. Shut up. <laughs> I think Ike isn't... Well, we also didn't go through a lot of the supports. A lot of the flavor from the characters, you lose out on supports. Uh, I don't know if it would have changed much. It, it does. Especially, like, his supports with Leith. It adds a lot more flavor to his character and Leet's character actually. But does it does it matter because it's not part of the main quest line? Like I understand that it's in the game and you can meet more about the character and all that, but like the the main quest line is supposed to be literally the hero's journey and it's supposed to be what they were to what they've become. And honestly, there wasn't there wasn't a ton of change over Ike's character over the entire game. Even when even when his dad was still alive. Well, you also well, not originally, but the rest of his kind of characterization is finished like, through Radiant Dawn. I would, I would have liked to see, you know, like some flaws. Like, I didn't really have any flaws. That's always my problem with JRPG characters. Which, again, like, in supports. Uh, what, what flaws are revealed through his supports? Honestly, I never did a lot of them personally. So how do you know? My it's called is, the internet. My point is, like... It, a lot of JRPG characters don't really have flaws. They have traits. And some people could consider those traits flawed, but like, like uh, think about Lloyd from Tales of Symphonia, you know? He was just kind of annoying. And yeah, he was super headstrong and whatever, and he didn't let anything stand in his way. And whereas that was an annoying trait when it came to things like politeness, uh, it, it was ultimately what allowed him to defeat the greater evil. And okay, but Lloyd's problem the wasn't the wasn't lack of characterization. He was a copy paste of your typical shonen protagonist. Uh, in a way, so kind of was Ike. No. Yeah. No, he was brash, but he wasn't like, oh, nothing will stand in my way. He was regular, like, uh, well, fuck. What do we do? I don't know. Soren, you're the tactician. What the fuck do I do? Yeah, but. That's part of what made him bland, was instead of having something like, instead of the headstrong brashness, he kind of had nothing. He kind of had friends, you know, like... <laughs> you were actually not paying attention to the game then. Yeah? Yeah. Like, like the brash, he had a lot of self-doubt, that was part of it. He felt like he wasn't, what's it called, what's that fucking, uh, 
He wasn't fit to be leading the Grail mercenaries, but he did it regardless. And also there was a whole revenge story with the Black Knight. Um, so he, Ike actually considers the Black Knight his last teacher. Right. There's a lot more to like. I, I think you're actually undercutting Ike, which provided I could be doing the same thing with Lloyd because I never actually finished Tales of Symphonia. Like, a lot of what I remember from Tales of Symphonia is like the first three temples, which like isn't even a quarter of the game. Yeah, no, there's, there's... There's very little. There's much more to the game, but uh, I'm gonna be real. Nobody should ever play Tales of Symphonia for Lloyd's character. I'm specifically comparing the two of them because... Uh, Why did I do that? I, didn't, I literally did not need to do that. I, I'm specifically comparing the two of those, those characters simply because, like, the impact of, of their importance on the game to me is minimal. Like... I think the Fire Emblem are good games, but I think they're good games because of how they are games. I think that majority of Fire Emblem stories kind of suck. Well, a lot of them are pretty much, ooh, look at this evil dragon demon. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of the Fire Emblem stories are actually really average, if not just straight up trash. And if you want to, if you want to talk about like games, JRPGs that are known for their stories, like the Tales games. <sighs> Just because it's convoluted doesn't mean it's good, you know? Yeah, no, yeah, like, like and that's, complication doesn't mean good. And, and don't get me wrong, they're interesting, and it's but it's interesting in the same way that, like, an M. Night Shyamalan movie was interesting. It doesn't make it a good fucking movie just because there's a plot twist. It's just you're real fucking interested in figuring out what that plot twist is, and that's the fun of watching the movie. It's the same thing with the Tales games. The games are unnecessarily complicated, but you're waiting for the twist. You're waiting for the thing that you don't see coming, even though you're trying to fucking see it coming no matter how hard you do. And the games are so ridiculous, you never will actually find out what is coming before it fucking happens. It's really hard to predict with those games. And that was the point of it. With Fire Emblem, I think Fire Emblem's fun because it's like, it's a well-made, you know, tactical like, yeah, kind of rock, RPG. paper, scissors, RPG. Um, with enough depth, but it's still simple to understand. And like, there's plenty of things that are good about uh, the fucking JRPG that is Fire Emblem. I, I just, I don't really think the characters are good. I mean, granted, you've played or been uh, or experienced, what, maybe three? Mm -mm. No, I used to play Fire Emblem games back when I was in Japan. Um, which, again, there's probably some translation that was lost because my Japanese wasn't the best back then. Um, but I did play through quite a few of them. Which ones? Uh, man, I don't know. It was shit that I played when I was like fucking 10. <laughs> Hit him, Ross! <laughs> like 10 through 14. So I think only up to that point, maybe. I think maybe Path of Radiance had just. No, because Path of Radiance had just come out then, I think. So it was eight of them. Mind you, I had played Path of Radiance. Yeah. Um. I, I never actually beat the game. I got to the, uh, whatever, the part where Ike becomes a lord. Yeah. And, like, that was that, you know? And I, just because I had done poorly and, like, Titania was my strongest unit and shit and, like, all my other... I had just done the turtle strat forever, so a bunch of my people were super underleveled and, like, it just shit went badly for me! Well, I mean, um, also, like, usually the first time you play through a Fire Emblem game... Your strongest character is 100% going to be, like, your veteran character. Yeah. Like, first time I played through Fire Emblem 7, uh, I went through, like, a million chapters. Or I got, like, almost halfway through the, uh, almost halfway through the second campaign, well, I guess the, like, second portion of the game, mm -hmm. using only, like, one character. And when I realized, oh, I'm not supposed to do that because the rest of my guys are fucked if I do that, I legit restarted my campaign because I, I noticed, oh, I, I literally can't beat this by doing this. And I just don't have the patience for that, you know? 
Um, but that doesn't mean I don't think that the games are bad. There's a good way to play the games, and then there's a way that I happened to play the game on, on my first playthrough of it, and, you know, that was... Which uh, was bad. That was that. You know, I was, I was done with that, because, you know, I fucked up, but I didn't want to fucking... It was a lot of work to fuck up that much, you know? I don't want to go back and do more work to not fuck up. The, just... the, the thing I will say I hate about Fire Emblem, it's really easy to fuck up your entire playthrough. Yeah. Like, it's so easy to fuck up your entire playthrough. But it's part of the fun of it, you know? And, and it's part of the permadeath of characters and, like, all that shit. Where? Yeah. Oh, they're probably it's, down here. It's kind of a big deal. Uh, Where, though? Oh, hello. Oh, right. This is the Fire Emblem Heroes. <laughs> uh, so, all that being said, man, I, like, Ike might be a good Fire Emblem character, but he's... He's not a very good character in general. I agree to disagree. He might be a good JRPG character, but just like writing wise, like he's just he's kind of a poor. He's kind of a poor Hurry up and get hero, us. I guess. I uh, I'll, I'll agree to disagree on that. I'm not going to say he's a bad character. But I think he is a good character. I think he's a good character. Especially compared to some of the contemporary writing we have these days. And, you know. Well, I mean, Path of Radiance. It slash Radiant Dawn came out like a decade ago. Yeah. That was ten years ago. A lot changes, so. Yeah, but I mean, like, ten years ago, you had stuff like Skyrim already. Yeah. Well, no, Radiant... What, what did Radiant Dawn was 2006, 2007? I know Path of Radiance was 2005. In fact, I think... I think actually exactly... 11 years ago today? It might have been 10 years ago today. Was, Fallout no, was, 3 was released. Fallout 3 was... Was that not 2009? Well, we can look that up. I'm sure it was 2008. Well, we're, we're done here either way. We have knocked out three episodes. We did it. You can go back to your cowboys. Nice. Quick, tell them how much you hate them from stopping you being around your cowboys. Literally so much! Anyway, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Cowboys.